Well, in Florence, they say never trust in a peasant architect. <laughs> but we I get say, that. I get that. But we say, it's still there. The Tower of Pisa. It actually has no official name. Pisa is the walled city that encompasses it. Oddly, the tower is not connected to the cathedral like most in Europe. It's also round instead of square, which was inspired by minarets found in Tunisia. What might blow your mind is that it's been leaning nearly since the day it was constructed. So how have they kept it from falling down? A bit of creativity, engineering, and honestly, luck. If you just think that people come in here from all over the world, they call it Pisa and they don't call it the tower. Huh. They think that Pisa is the tower, it's as not the, tower, the city. Right. It's a city that was founded about 4,000 years ago. We were like Venice here. We had 270 islands in this area. No we are thing. walking on water now. Then uh, in this square, you have the circle of life. You have the baptistry that represents the, the beginning of yeah. your life, the baptism. Then in between, does the whole lifetime until you find the church. The people of Pisa hundreds of years ago were incredibly forward thinking and inspired by so many different cultures. In fact, the inside arches are inspired by a classic Tunisian design with the alternating blocks of color. The entire ceiling is coated in 24 karat gold leaf. Gold represents heaven and in the middle you have this coat of arms, which tells us who actually funded this entire project, the Medici family a filthy rich family of bankers who literally funded most of the Renaissance. I also have heard the Medici family often funded these cathedrals to basically buy favor or bonus points in the afterlife. So I had to ask if this was true. You got something in return. Exactly, like they, it might help you in the afterlife. Or they were smarter than others. This is the reason why the Medici family became powerful because they were smarter than others. They knew how to talk to people. They knew right. how to convince people. Maybe through corruption sometimes. Sometimes. Of course. Of course the <laughs> we do it now, of course. <laughs> it happens. We pay people for entry, opening the door. Correct. Sometimes. Right, right, right. We don't do it. Don't tell. Yeah. Not sure if you knew this, but Galileo was from Pisa. In fact, there was a location in this church where he became inspired to discover the little thing called gravity. This chandelier here, the, the same place where Galileo stood Galileo Galilei was from Pisa, the scientist. It stood in front of this place to observe the swing. So the chandelier was moving and through the poles, he understood that there was a kind of force that could control the velocity and the acceleration. What? This force is the gravity force. Right. He didn't know anything about it because he was just 17 years, he was a young boy. So this was a moment of science, pure science, to yeah, be honest. That's amazing. Grazie. Thank you. The amazing thing is that the whole square here is a message. The church is your richness, it's right. your community actually, life. And then you have right over there the hospital, and then on the other side, in front of it, the cemetery. It's hidden by the cathedral. Wow. And this is the resurrection. Yeah, wow. Okay, so most people probably don't know that. No, like, they this don't. This is what it represents. From the entrance to the square, you cannot see the tower. Huh, you wow. see all of the buildings, but the resurrection, you need to deserve it. Yeah. Quite unique, if you yeah. think about it. At, well, if you go to another place, yeah, even in Florence, yeah. you find the bell tower by the church. Not separated, not behind it, covered by it. The funniest thing about this one is that we don't know who made it. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah, we have the name for all of them, for all of the buildings in the square, in the city that is right there, except this one. When the architect started to make it, at the second floor, they had to stop it, and he said, I cannot go on because it's sinking. Oh, and so I even made then? No, wow. Yeah, suddenly, suddenly, after five years, they had a problem with the foundation, the subsoil, and here is okay. water. That tower is on the edge of the old river that used well, to be in here. I did not know that. And it took two centuries for arriving to the top of it, where you see the flag of peace on the top. Three different moments, three different architects. One architect also started to use longer pillars and columns on this side, shortens on the other side, just to counterbalance Just it. a little bit. You can just see. Little, you can see it. Almost. Because it, it was not that leaning until the sixth floor, almost the top of it. Then they had to stop it once again because it became too heavy. And they had to stop for one century. Wow. Just at the end of the 1300, the last architect built the top of it, where you see the flag. 
So the top of it is straighter than the rest, at least to create a sort of illusion of something perfect. Yeah. It was supposed to be 300 feet. Wow, okay. But it's just 170, so it's nothing compared to the real project. Right. But the real problem for the tower, there used to be a church there, there used to be another building, a monastery here, almost touching the tower. Wow. And they destroyed it, they demolished it for opening up a bigger, wider square. Okay. And when they started, 200 years ago, uh, the tower started to tremble, actually, oh, wait, because they removed it. something behind it. Right. And so it arrived to four degrees of lean. Oh wow, okay. Uh, 30 years ago it was five and a half, so it was falling down. Yeah, it so was too had, much. Yeah, it was really too much. The center of gravity was going out of it. They had to make a lot of things. One was to put very heavy blocks of lead on the other side, this metal, mm. to push the ground. Then a sort of belt at the fourth floor uh, with uh, two iron cables for pulling the tower. It was amazing. Wow. <laughs> and then another excavation project. They dug out the soil and the tower sank back about. 45 centimeters, that means nothing, but it's one degree and a half. And that should keep it there, right? So yes, hopefully. of course. The good news is that when they reopen it, 2001, since that moment, the tower had walked five centimeters alone. So it's stabilizing itself. Wow. Of course, it's, it won't be straight. Yeah, Nobody wants to see the straight kind of tower of Pisa. I mean, right, right. They're here for the leaning tower. Well, from an engineering standpoint, I mean, I think I always thought of it as like, wow, this is how in the world. But honestly, I think now, just the engineering that goes into keeping all of this of course, together of course. is equally impressive. Are you ready to go up? Yeah, then we're going to see all of it. Okay. <laughs> So it's empty, there's nothing to see inside, but imagine ropes in here to oh, bring the bells. Bell so originally there used to be 293 steps. Okay. Now we climb up 257. It's not possible to get to the very top of it. It's a bit dangerous now. And it's not hard at all because when you're going up, the lean helps you out a lot and it seems as you're walking on a flat area sometimes. Right, yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. And it's an empty double cylinder, so there are two big walls and there's the staircase in between. Okay, we can go up, grazie. So this was the first construction. Uh, okay. They stopped right here, this, wow. this height. So this is when he noticed like when they, not When right. it started to sink, to sink down and slide also. I think there's a misconception, right? That yeah. How many people do you meet who assume it happened after it was straight? Probably everybody on the Yeah, of course, <laughs> probably the <you're> most. <right. laughs> it's funny, as we walk around, you, you definitely feel the, the, the pitch change. Totally, yeah. totally. Have a look at the shape of this leather street. It looks like a, sh a snake. It's zigzag. Yeah. This was the river. The reason really? why the tower leans. So that was the river that used to be also underneath the tower. Oh, wow. When they changed it, they had already built all of the buildings besides. Oh, like around so it the river? Around the okay. river, all along it. You built it on the softest ground possible. Next, we headed to the cemetery. Most of the frescoes were damaged during heavy bombing in World War II, but one of the most disturbing still remains fully intact, which includes a connection to the divine comedy and Satan. So Lucifer here is the first representation of the one that was taught by Dante Alighieri in the Divine Comedy, the big okay. poem, yeah. Hell, Purgatory and Heaven. When Dante meets Lucifer, Lucifer has three mouths, eating people, sinners, and you see the central one that has a side mouth with a, a sort of arm or maybe a leg yeah, yeah, <laughs> inside. Yeah. And he's digesting people and of course getting rid of them somehow. Right. And the particularity of this image is that it is the, the first one divided in circles, okay. in different sections, as Dante Alighieri described it. It is amazing. It is. It is beautiful. When you take in all of this, mm -hmm. as you've shown me, like you start to get a better grasp of like, well, all of it's amazing. Yes, like inside awesome. the church and graveyard. And, and everything is connected. And it's not just a tower, it's the symbol of well, a, not a city, it's a symbol of Italy. It's yeah. something that you, you, I mean, you have it for granted. It's, it's here, it's, yeah. it's your tower. So right. it's a symbol that is part of us. And 
That's well, awesome. I love your encouragement. I love that, uh, just your insights. I mean, I've learned so much more <laughs> than I did teaching art history. So I really, <laughs> really appreciate your time and all so your knowledge you. on no, it. No, I really appreciate that you're here. That, uh, yes. My pleasure to have you in my city.